Thanks, Sophie. Welcome to BBC London at a slightly later time. Thanks for joining us. Hello and good evening to you. A woman who accused her therapist of raping her during a session at his North London clinic has won a civil case against him at the High Court and awarded more than £200,000 in damages. Ella Janna, who waived her right to anonymity, says it's robbed her of years of her life. She's been speaking to Nick Johnson. Smiles. It's taken eight long years for Ella Janna to have something worth smiling about. Today, winning a civil case against a therapist who abused her. Michael Luzada, a self-proclaimed sex therapist, raped and assaulted Ella after claiming he used sex as a therapeutic technique. I was left suicidal after what Luzada did to me um, and it's taken everything in me to get to be this person that I am today. In 2018, the Crown Prosecution Service decided not to press charges leading Ella to waive her anonymity and launch civil proceedings at the High Court. I've lost a life that I would have lived otherwise. I've lost relationships um, that couldn't square my commitment to this fight. I have complex PTSD. In his judgment today, the judge, Mr Justice Baker, said that Michael Luzada was motivated by the confidence in his own ability to heal women through what were essentially sexual practices. The judge said that he accepted Ella's versions of events in their entirety. I'm happy and I'm bitter that eight years of my life have been taken from me. This is a civil result, but it's not a criminal conviction. No, it's not. What's your message to both the police and the Crown Prosecution Service? You didn't do your jobs. You failed me. They totally and utterly failed me. And they failed other people because they let him go. In a statement, the Crown Prosecution Service said that following a careful review of the evidence, it concluded there was not a realistic prospect of conviction, a decision later supported by two independent reviews. And the Met Police says it has not received any complaints about the investigation, but would welcome the chance to discuss this further so it can understand and address any concerns. Ella says she's still coming to terms with today's outcome, but she carries in her heart the other victims of abuse whose voices haven't been heard. Nick Johnson, BBC London. And just to say, if you or someone you know might need support with any of the issues raised there, there is a list of organisations online that can help in confidence. Just search for BBC Action Line or you can call the number to hear recorded information. Four men have been found guilty of killing a teenager who was shot outside a house party in Tottenham and then struck with a sword. 17-year-old Tyler McDermott was attacked in April last year. Despite the efforts of paramedics, he died in hospital the following day. Now to what used to be one of the most dangerous junctions in the city, which led to traffic restrictions being brought in seven years ago. Only bikes, buses and pedestrians are allowed to use all of Bank Junction during the week. But our transport correspondent Tom Edwards reports on why there are calls for black cabs to be given access again. Junction in the city where on weekdays, buses, bikes and pedestrians are allowed to use all of the junction. Everything else is restricted or banned. So what do people make of the junction? For me, it's OK. <laughs> I don't know what about the people who work around in this area. Maybe they prefer to have a possibility to come here by a car. So <laughs> I have a bicycle. Uh, I like it. Uh, I think there should be only bicycles and public transport and taxis in central London. So you think taxis should be allowed here? Yeah, electric trackers, yes, for sure. There are now moves to allow black cabs to use this junction again. Restrictions were introduced in 2017 to address safety concerns. The junction was the most dangerous in the square mile with over 100 casualties and two cycling deaths. 
since the changes, road danger has been reduced and cycling groups want the junction kept as it is. The whole area just feels, as you can tell, just a lot safer for all pedestrians, for everybody around. And it's a, it's a, you know, it's a great place to hang out, to eat economically. It's been beneficial environmentally, it's great. So we just don't want to see a backward step. You know, we need to go forward in this city around green travel and active travel, not backwards. Others, like Lord Holmes of Richmond, who's blind, wants the City of London to allow black cabs to use all of the junction again. For blind people, for anyone who has access needs, if they want a point-to-point -point journey for leisure, for tourism, for work, they're effectively barred from this part of the city. That can't be right for equality. It can't be right for our economy. The City of London is due to make a decision on the junction restrictions tomorrow. Tom Edwards, BBC London. Right, tennis and the new British number one, Jack Draper from Sutton, plays his second round match at Queen's Club tomorrow, a big game against top seed and defending champion Carlos Alcaraz. Well, we sent Paul Hawkins to Sutton Tennis and Squash Club, where a young Jack first picked up a racket. How do you know Jack? Uh, well, when we first joined the club, what, 20 odd years ago, um, Jack was a, a junior here, he was literally a toddler, and his mum was our, uh, was our head coach. And um, yeah, and Jack used to come down and play in the squads, in the junior squads. He would have only been two, two or three years old, um, but you knew straight away that he could really hit, hit the ball. He was playing with kids a, a few years older than him, and he was easily as good as them, even at a very, very young age. It's so hit and miss when it comes to making it pro in tennis, but you definitely, if anyone had a chance, then you probably would have said Jack. Jack had the best yeah, chance. For sure. Yeah, I mean, all through the age groups, really, he's, he's progressed all the way through and always been one of the top level players. It's lovely for us to have that link with him, that this was where he, he had his formative years and first started playing tennis on these courts. So for everyone at the club, that's absolutely lovely. And he's referenced us a few times in interviews and stuff, which is lovely. It's really nice. How's he going to get on against Carlos Alcaraz, the best player in the world tomorrow? Oh, he's absolutely going to beat him, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? Really? It's going to be difficult, isn't it, John? Very, very difficult, but off of the back of last week, I think definitely stands a very good chance, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Can he win Wimbledon? Okay. Definitely one day. Like, okay. Home tournament as well. The, the crowd, the atmosphere that you get from playing a home tournament, especially a slam like Wimbledon, I mean, it just carries you through. Would you, yeah. put, would you put your house on it? I wouldn't put my house on it, but uh, I think he's got an outstanding chance. If he doesn't do it this year, certainly in the coming years, 100%. Yeah. Some fond memories there of Jack Draper. We wish him all the best, of course. At least we've got summer tennis weather this week. Louise is here, smiling. I know, <laughs> weather improving and Wimbledon round the corner. Shh, oh. shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, lovely. Next week, we are likely to see temperatures in the mid-20s, maybe even higher. That's going to be a bit of a shock to the system. Beautiful day today. Lovely sunny spells around, a pleasant feel out there. Not too hot for most of us. And high pressure dominating the Story. Now, it's going to stay with us into tomorrow, actually. So clear skies through the night tonight, but it's not going to be a cold night. And into tomorrow morning, plenty of sunshine from the word go. Very nice. Might just be worth pointing out the wind direction. It's a light breeze, but still coming from the northeast. So close to the Thames estuary, might be a little bit of a chill in the air at times. But nevertheless, with a bit of some shelter away from that breeze, 23 degrees, the expected high, that's 73 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. And this weather front here could just produce a few isolated showers on Saturday, but it'll weaken. And then high pressure will build into the following week. The wind direction swing round to a southwesterly. And so that means warmer still. So it is likely if you are planning ahead, you might actually be able to plan with some confidence. Yes, we could see the risk of some drizzle or showers on Saturday, but I'm just going to linger on this for 10 seconds or so, because look at that dry, settled, sunny and warm. At least at least 25 degrees, maybe higher. We'll take that, won't we, Riz? Certainly, we'll linger away. <laughs> Louise, thank you. And that is it from us. Thanks very much for watching. By the way, check out the Q's at Q to see London's stinkiest plant, something I never thought I'd say, on our Instagram and website. Uh, there is, of course, coverage of the Scotland-Switzerland Euros match coming up in a few moments. That's here on BBC One and iPlayer. From me and everyone on the team, do have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.